This is long distance. Get the Riverdale Exchange, please. Riverdale Exchange? Oh, yes, just a minute. Mr. Summers, Chicago office is calling. Hello? Yes? Oh, yes, Mr. Thorpe. Well, just a minute. Let me have those names again. Jeff Rickard. Mac Bowman. Oh, they are, eh? They're plenty good, Tom. In fact, the best telephone lines one we've had since you left the field. And just as hard to handle. Well, that's fine. I like them tough. Sure. We're rushing construction on the line north of the dam right now. Yeah, they'll be gabbing over it in three weeks. Yes, we will have to have another operator. Yes, Mr. Thorpe. Goodbye. Hello, who's calling, please? Just a minute. The line's not out. Oh, Helen, I have to run up to the dam. If Sylvia calls, tell her not to wait dinner, but I'll be back in time for the dance. Yes, Mr. Summers. What number do you want? Number, please. Oh, I'll get them. Just a minute. The line is busy. Boy, we just made it. I bet you they're not dropping the tank. You want some gas? Yeah, fill her up. Yes, sir. So this is Riverdale. Yeah, beautiful, ain't it? I wonder why I took this job. You took it to be with your pal. Didn't want to leave me, don't you remember? Yeah, I remember, but don't rub it in. Ah, uh, you'll be all right. As soon as you get your mind off that gal you met on State Street. Can I help it if I get romantic? How much? Two dollars even. There you are. Thank you, sir. Say, where's the dam they're stringing the telephone wires up to? Up in the hills, about ten miles. Now, where's the telephone office? Over there. Where's the hotel? Over there. Must be a retired hitchhiker. Say, you gonna be around here long? No, just long enough to rob the bank. Fancy running into this in Riverdale. Oh, dear old Riverdale. We're gonna like dear old Riverdale. You took the voice right out of my mouth. Don't look now, Helen, but somebody must have left the door open. And a couple of horse flies got in. anything for you. Yeah, we're working our way through college. Lady, would you please take a subscription to the ladies' home and final? No, thank you. Well, that's just fine. Then we won't have to go to college. Did you wish to see someone? I've had my wish, gorgeous. No, seriously. We're supposed to see some guy by the name of Summers. I'm Rickard and he's Bone. Mr. Summers is gone for the day. That's too bad. I'll have to see him tomorrow. Say, do they really dance in this boy? Yeah, and I guess that kind of lets you out. I'll be there, gorgeous, and we can dance. I wouldn't count on it if I were you. Okay, we'll sit one out. There, just a minute. Number, please. The nerve of some people. <laughs> just a minute, please. I suppose they think that's big time comedy. The line is busy. <laughs> I think the one with the pug nose is kind of cute. You would. Hello, hold the meat market. We'll hold the line a minute. Yes, Mr. Summers. No, he's not. But Helen has a message for you. Just a minute. Sylvia Summers on the line. Hello, Sylvia. Hello. Helen? Oh. Said he won't be coming home for dinner. Oh. Uh, thanks, Helen. Uh, will I be seeing you at the dance tonight? Yes, Daddy and I will be over just as soon as we get off duty tonight. She sure trusts us. You know where that call came from? Yes, Campbell's apartment. She must be crazy. Oh, I don't know. Campbell's not so hard to take. She doesn't wind up in the soup. Dottie, that's not funny. Sylvia and I worked together for two years. She was a sweet kid. Well, even a sweet kid rates a flirtation now and then. 
Not when she's married to a man like Tom Somers. I beg your pardon? Oh, Mr. Wilson. Well, I can't understand a word you're saying. Oh, a boy. Well, congratulations. Campbell likes them. Hello, Hello, boss. Mrs. Summers here? Yeah, she's dancing with Campbell. Short one, wasn't it? You were late getting here. Excuse me, Pat. I'll see you later. Right. How about dancing with me, mister? Well, sure. If Helen doesn't mind. Oh, of course not. Go ahead. I'm sorry I was late getting here. Oh, that's all right. Tickets. Tickets for this clam bake? Yeah, tickets. Okay, we'll give. How much? Half a bucket throw. Fancy meeting you here. Can't say I fancy it. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Nothing. Say, honey, could you all mix me a mint julep? Is you from down south? Yes, ma'am. I'm from the deep south. What part of the south? New Orleans. Oh. Since when did they move New Orleans up to South Chicago? Oh, they didn't move it. I just commuted. <laughs> Still a fresh guy. But you know, I didn't recognize you tonight. You look so spiffy. Oh, I'm a different person after dark. You don't know what you're missing by not dancing with me. I have a vivid imagination. Go on, me. What's the matter with you? Why don't you stop? Well, I thought the reception committee was supposed to see that everybody had a good time. Well, I don't happen to be on the reception committee. Come on, let's dance. What? Just a minute, Helen. Is this guy bothering you? He certainly is. Why don't you leave the young lady alone? Well, why don't you mind your own business? See, another crack like that and I'll throw you out. Hey, keep your hands off of me. Get out, fresh guy. Hey, what's going on here? You can't do this to us. I'm an American citizen. Throw the citizen out. Hey, you can't do this. I'll shoot you. I stand upon my car. What about our 
our hats. You go get them. Wise guy, huh? I'm gonna like this town. Who's calling, please? Just a minute. Number, please. Well, I'll try and get him. The line is busy. Ma, that man's here again. Hello. Hello. Do you still want to see Mr. Summers? Why, yeah. Is he in? Yes, he's in. He's waiting for you. Hey, thanks. Hello, Number, please. I'm ringing in. You don't know Sorry. what you missed last night, gorgeous. I'm really a good dancer. Yeah, let me have those figures again, will you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take care of it right away. Right. We're uh, Rickard and Bowman. Rickard and Bowman reporting, eh? He's Rickard. Well, will you start to shove it? Quiet! Get me Heber. Thorpe tells me you two are pretty good. The best in the company. The best in the company, eh? Yep, that's us. Oh, hello, Heber. Say, I've got the two greatest linesmen in the world. Yeah, they admit it. I'm sending them right up to you. These boys can do the work of ten men. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> and you see that they do it, Heber. Now listen, you mugs. Later on, when you get a chance, I want you to take a look through the records of the telephone company. And you'll find a guy named Hotline Summers. And everybody said he was the greatest lineman the phone company ever had. That's me. Now, scram. Scram where? Grab a truck and report to Heber, the foreman. He's up at the dam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Smart guy, huh? You had a pick on Hotline Summers the first day we were in town. Why didn't you tell me who he was? Me tell you? You're supposed to know everything. Hey, why don't you two hire a whore? Number, please. Hey, you mugs. I thought I told you to grab a truck and get out of here. Dear old Riverdale. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like this bird, too. Well, just a minute. The line is still busy. I just got a letter from the main office. And as soon as the new line is in, this is going to be a 24-hour exchange. No more closing at 10 o'clock. What do you mean? We're gonna work all night? No, I'll put on an extra girl. Oh, that's fine. Gee, I know just the girl. Well, send her in. Bet they won't forget the bowling out they got. They won't be bothering us for a while. <laughs> the line is busy. I still think the one with the puggy nose is kind of cute. You fall for the funniest knickknacks. Oh. Uh, no, one, please. The line is still busy. I'm terribly sorry. Where's the foreman on his job? That's him over there. Hey, what about parking this truck? What's the matter? Can't you drive? Oh, park it yourself. It don't belong to us. So you're the two mugs that can do the work of ten men, are you? Well, pick out a pole, wise guys, and get to work. Do your stuff. You certainly picked a swell pair of mugs to tangle up with. Now they'll dry up, will you? Now they'll dry us up. The ride is ragged. Maybe this heaver ain't so tough. Maybe. Look out below! Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Heaver. So you do the work of ten men, huh? Does the other eight of you drop wrenches too? Thank you, Mr. Heaver.
Hello. Hello. Number, please. This is Rickard, testing the new circuit. Coming through all right? Yes, you're okay. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, gorgeous. I was beginning to think you didn't like me. Who was it, the fresh guy? In person. Hello. Hello. Number, please. Hey, what's the idea of cutting me off? I wasn't through. Testing, I mean. Give me a signal on 22. Hey, beautiful. I'm not busy tonight. What time do you get off duty? Sorry, we're not allowed to give out that information. How can you be so hard-hearted? You know I like you. Listen, baby, I'm off my nut about you. I'll say you're off your nut. This is Summers. Hello? Hello? Helen, who was that? That was the fresh Mr. Rickard from Chicago, testing his lungs. Get away! Oh, gee, that's tough. We gotta do something about that. Gee, how? Lead with your left, see? Keep pecking at his chin. You get him off balance, then shoot a right cross. Nail him on the button with everything you got. Now, the next time you meet him, let him have it. Next time, I'm gonna do it right now. I dare you to put a chip on your shoulder. Did a nice job, champ. Just like when I was his age. Yeah, sure, thank you for showing me how. You better get home and change those wet clothes. Where do you live? In town with my mother and sister. He's got a sister. How old is your sister? 22. She works for the telephone company, same as you do. Oh, she does, huh? What does she do? She's the chief operator. She's the chief operator. Say, do you know you're liable to catch cold? How would you like to ride home with us in a telephone truck? Gee, that would be swell. So your, so your sister, sister works, works for the telephone, telephone company. company. Come on. Gee, I'd like to drive a telephone truck. Stick around with me. I'll show you how to drive one. Come on, get in. about a radio, just ask your Uncle Red. Short wave, too? Sure. Short wave, long wave? Uh, crime wave, permanent wave, anything. My set's a short wave. King little set, too. Only it don't work. Well, we'll fix it up for you. Say, uh, you think your sister will be home? Oh, I don't know. She ought to be. Hey, Mom! Yes? Well, Dad, what on earth happened to you? Oh, I fell in the water up by the dam. This is Red. This is my mom. This is Malloy. I'm Jeff Rickard, and this is Mac Bowman. Red saved my life, Mom. Saved your life? Oh, I'm afraid he's building that up a little, Ms. Malloy. I, he wasn't in any real danger. Well, in any case, thank you for what you did. He's going to fix my radio. He is. Well, that's fine. But first, I think you better run upstairs and get rid of those wet clothes. OK. Don't go away, fellas. We won't. The radio's in there. OK, Ted. You're just my strangers in town, aren't you? Yeah. Well, maybe you'd like to stay and have a home-cooked dinner. A home-cooked dinner? I have well, that'd be grand, Mrs. Malloy. Well, while you're looking at the radio, I'll run upstairs and see how Ted's getting along. Boy, a real home-cooked dinner. Rowdy doll. Shh, quiet. Pretty soft, eh? On a second thought, pretty soft for you, but how about me? Nobody asked you to stay. Yeah, try and get me away before dinner. Sit down. 
down, sit down. Thanks. Boy, this is what I call real comfort. Isn't that a company truck outside? I don't know, it looks like it. Mom, I brought Daddy home for dinner. Good, we've got company. Company? Good evening, ladies. Well, isn't it a small world? Positively stuffy sometimes. How did you get here? Well, you see, your mother invited us for dinner. And uh, I fell for your little brother when I found out he was you. You should have seen. When I fell in the water, they hauled me out right on the end of a fishing pole. Mm, that must have taken a lot of courage, Mr. Rickard. Well, Ted's exaggerating a little. <laughs> Teddy, you know what happens to little boys that exaggerate? Certainly he does. They grow up to be telephone linemen, don't they? He begins this early in the season. We've had a lot of unusual things this season, Mother. If this keeps up, we'll sure get our feet wet, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm not sensitive to colds. And it strikes me as the sort of person who doesn't catch things easily. I do wish it would stop raining. It's been pouring on and off for three weeks now. Jake says his pop's worried about the dam. Who's Jake's pop? He's the foreman at the dam. He's working on the new concrete they've been pouring. Well, one good flood and we'll all be a hundred miles down the country. Say, want to fix the radio? Well, perhaps he doesn't want to, Ted. Oh, sure. You ladies will excuse us. Ted and I will do big things. And by the way, Mrs. Malloy, Shorty's a great hand at washing dishes. Well, that's where it is. Oh, surely a clever lineman like Mr. Rickard wouldn't need a diagram. Try the earphones, Ted. No use in letting this thing run into a world war, you know. What'd you say, Red? I was uh, talking to your sister. Try him again. Nothing coming through. That's funny. I thought there was nothing a lineman couldn't fix. Maybe we'd better send for Mr. Summers and let him do it. Yeah, he was a fair lineman, too. Gee whiz, must be swell to be a lineman. I'd like to be climbing poles up. It's all right, Teddy, when you get the proper cooperation from the other departments. What do you mean? Well, when you want to test a connection, they're liable to give you an uncivil answer. They're liable to even give you a wrong connection. And then there are other departments that just can't keep their mind on their own work. And then again, Teddy, there are those departments that spend all their time getting the other departments in wrong. Gee whiz, you'll never get anywhere that way. You said it. Hey, you come back here. What do you think you're doing, mixing concrete? Well, that ain't in my line. I'm strictly an outdoor man. <laughs> Your mother said she'd rather finish the dishes alone. She probably wants to have a little china wear left for breakfast. He broke two of her best plates. You're losing your touch, Shorty. Now, the last time you laundered those dishes for that little gal in Pittsburgh... Hey, what do you say we all go to movies, well, huh? Well, in all this rain, I think the idea is that he ought to. Try those earphones, Teddy. Get anything? Nothing coming through. I guess you and I better go up on the roof and look at that area. What in this rain? Oh, rain doesn't bother him. Come on, I'll show you the way. Okay, be right down. Be back in a minute. Gee, it stopped raining again. Now you won't get wet. Yeah, where's that aerial? Right over there by the edge of the roof. Cozy and quiet, ain't it? <laughs> Teddy. Why don't you go on downstairs? Maybe there's something already coming in on your step. Gee, that's right. I better go listen. What about Red? He says he'll meet us there later. Come on, get your hat and coat. Want to come along, Teddy? No, I'm staying here with Red. All right, see you later. Hey, Teddy! Gee whiz.
Give me that oh. dumbbell. Oh, jealous, huh? <coughs> I hope it's nothing trivial. Hello. Hello. Test number six on the new circuit. It's... <coughs> Did you get any distance on that set last night? Yeah. Ted got Australia and I got pneumonia. The test is okay on number six. I'm sorry. I'm busy tonight. I've seen you fall for a doll before, but never so hard. You're practically cemented in. Well, now that you've gotten that out of your system, how about going to work and quit kidding? Maybe I wasn't kidding. How would you like these pliers wrapped around your neck? Now I know I wasn't kidding. Look here, Red. Be reasonable. What did we do with a wife? Yeah. Mud. Well, looks like we're all set for the cutover. Helen! Helen! Oh, did I get an eyeful? I ran every foot of the way to tell you. Tell me what? I was coming down Woodrow Street, and there on the opposite side of the street, you know, down the lane behind her house? Well, they got into a car and they drove off this way. No, it must have been that way. Dottie. What are you talking about? Who drove off? Where? Sylvia Summers and Campbell. That's what I've been trying to tell you right along. Well, what's so terrible about that? The boss's wife putting her suitcase in her boyfriend's car. How do we know they're not a looping? Daddy, you're crazy. Well, maybe I am. Hello. Is Mrs. Summers in, Lydia? Well, when will she be in? She's gone away for the weekend. Mr. Summers was going to be away, so she thought she'd take a little holiday, too. Well, I understand she's gone to visit her sister, Blaine. Thank you, Lydia. I'll call her there. She wasn't there, was she? She's gone to her sister's for the weekend. Well, why don't you call her there? What, and give her away if she really has been fibbing? And it'd serve her right. I've got a better idea than that. Hello? No, ma'am, Mr. Campbell's not here. He's gone away for the weekend to his hunting cabin up at Mirror Lake. Okay, ma'am. Campbell's gone to his hunting cabin at Mirror Lake for the weekend. There. What did I tell you? Daddy, she must be out of her mind. Hmm. A minute ago, you said I was a dippy one. I wonder if she realizes what she's doing. I don't know, but if I was married to a swell guy like Summers, I wouldn't chisel on him. Daddy, you mustn't mention this to a soul. <laughs> what kind of a heel do you think I am? Well, I'm sorry, Doc. But if it ever got to Tom, it would break his heart. Number, please. Locate Heber and tell him I'll bring the extra equipment on the 715. And Dottie, tell Mrs. Summers, will you? And Sylvia, what are we going to do? There's no phone within miles of Mirror Lake. Oh, we've got to do something. How did that silly little fool smash her home like this? Hello. Hello. Reporting B circuit completely out. And how was the picture show last night? Red. When are you coming in? Did I hear you say red? Yes, I said it. Listen, young man. You've been butting into my life and my affairs ever since you came to this town. Now you can really butt in and welcome. I need help. I'm in a jam. Jams are my meat, gorgeous. I'm coming straight in. We picked a fine night for a ride. With this rain, we'll be up to our necks in mud. We've got to get her home before it's too late. Summers will be back in town any minute. Mirror Lake, that's quite a distance. But okay, little girl, let's go. Daddy, can you handle both those boards while I'm gone? Sure can, even with one arm tied behind me. Thanks, dear, and don't forget, keep your mouth shut. Oh, and by the way, telephone my mother and tell her I won't be home for dinner. Okay. Ted, hand me the telephone. Hello. Oh, Daddy. She won't be home. Well, where on earth could she be going on a night like this? Oh, she won't be home for dinner, and I had such a nice dinner. I baked such a good apple pie. 
Well, thank you, Dolly, for calling. Goodbye. Here, Ted. Here's the news, Mom. Heavy storms in the northern part of the state and moving southward. The Dalton River is reaching the flood stage. Emergency stations are being set up all along the riverbank. Oh, Ted, shut that thing off. Rain, rain, rain. Whenever is it going to stop? I'm sick of hearing about it. Lydia. Lydia. Where's Mrs. Summers? What's the matter with you? Where's Mrs. Summers? Uh, sh she went out. Out? What could she be doing out on a night like this? Oh, it wasn't like this when she went out. No? What time was that? Oh, about four o'clock. Four o'clock. And she isn't back yet? It's funny. What was she wearing? Her riding clothes. Was she alone? I don't know, Mr. Summers. I really don't. Now, Lydia, you say she left here at four o'clock. Yes, sir. Well, then you saw her leave. Was she alone or was someone with her? I don't know, Mr. Summers. I don't know. Well, I might as well pick up the axe and continue cooking the dinner. Miss Malloy, you don't know how much I... I'd keep my mouth shut if I were you. As soon as he gets inside, we're leaving here. And I hope you realize what that girl's doing for you. Hello, Mr. Summers. What do you mean by this? Helen, do you know what you're doing here? Why, certainly. I'm sorry, but I, I came here expecting to find somebody else. Well, then, suppose you leave. Helen, don't you think you'd better let me drive you back to town? No, thank you. Then you mean you, you're going to stay here? Why not? I came with Mr. Campbell. Naturally, I'll go back with him. Okay. If that's the way you feel. If it's any satisfaction to you, I... I realize I'm pretty much of a heel. Trifle late to arrive at that conclusion, isn't it? I know it doesn't mean much coming from me, but I think you're one of the swellest girls I've ever met. Skip it. Number, please. Number, please. Daddy, what's the idea? I don't know, Helen, but Mr. Summers wants to see you. Oh. Come in. Oh, hello, Helen. You put someone else in my... What did you expect? You left the board last night when you should have been on duty. But I left Dottie Pinch hitting for me. That isn't the point, Helen. Oh, I see. And that isn't the real reason. I think we may as well let the matter drop right there, don't you? I guess you're right. Thank you. I'm very sorry, Helen, but you know how I feel about things like that. Yes, Tom. I think I do. Number, please. Thank you. Hi, Kit. What did he say? See you tonight, Dottie. I'll tell you then. Hello, Hi. Helen. Day off? 
Plenty of them. Hello? Oh, yes, Mrs. Summers, he's in. Just a minute. What's the matter with Helen? Is she sick? No, she quit. He was supposed to be on duty. But you don't understand, dear. I can't take a bag. That has nothing to do with it. Well, we'll talk it over later. All right, dear. Goodbye. Heber, I'm glad you're here. Just going up to the dam, boss. Any orders? Plenty. Circuit 32 is out completely, and four poles are down on Anson's farm. When you finish that job, hurry across the delta. The river is still rising pretty fast. Okay. Get me Tucker in the Dalton Exchange. The line is busy. Number, please. So she quit, eh? Well, I heard different. Why don't you go back to the dam? Helen Malloy. Oh, she isn't here anymore. She got fired. Listen, funny face, you tell anyone that again, I'm going to smack you right across the kisser. Oh! Oh, isn't the half of it, sister? Hello? Oh, yes, Red, the line's through okay. Listen, Red, there's some dirty work going on around here, and I'm going to tell a certain guy the truth. I know just how you feel, Dottie, and I don't blame you. But you mustn't say anything. Helen did a neat job, and we can't butt in unless she asks us to. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Hey, give me a hand, will you? So Campbell beat your time, huh? What are you driving at? You were kind of stuck on that Malloy girl, weren't you? What's it to you? Ain't you heard the news yet? She spent the night up at Campbell's cabin at Mirror Lake. Yeah? Well, just so you won't repeat that, I'm gonna sew your mouth up for you. In case you forget it, I'm still stuck on the Malloy girl. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I was wondering, could you spare a cup of coffee for a lineman who's out of work? Out of work? Since when? Since a little while ago. He was tied the can to both of us. What did you do to Heaver? Me? I didn't do nothing. Oh, well, Red hung a cup on his chin. <laughs> oh, oh, well, in that case, I'll get you two cups of coffee. Come on. Well. Hello, Helen. Hello. Mother gave me your message. Why didn't you come over to the house? Well, well, he never did like Shorty and me. You know that. Don't lie, Red. Dottie told me the whole story. Well, forget it. Gee, things sure turned out fine, didn't they? I try to help a friend and get you and Shorty in a jam, and you both lose your jobs. Yeah, well, what about you? Well, don't worry about me. I live here. Well, that's just it. When Shorty and I first hit this place, I said, this is a great spot to settle down, and I'm coming back. Do you have to leave, Red? You gotta have a job. I'm a good lineman. And Chicago needs me pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I saw you. Yeah, I was a pretty fresh mug, wasn't I? Remember the time I asked you for the dance and they bounced me right out of the hall on my ear? <laughs> I'll miss you, Red. Will you? No kidding. That's all I want to know. Come on, I'll take you home. Don't you think we ought to wait for Shorty and Dottie? Well, they'll probably get some things they want to talk over themselves. Can you imagine that mug falling for Dottie? Oh, Dottie's a swell kid. Yeah. Come on, Tad, shut off the radio. It's time to go to bed. Oh, Mom, I wish I could stay up and listen to that Boy Scout rally from England. Well, how much longer have you got to wait? Oh, well, don't get here till 5 o'clock in the morning. 5 o'clock? Oh, you know, the difference in time. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You take the alarm clock, set it for 5, you can get up and hear it. That's okay. But don't forget to call me at 7. Barometer at 5 a.m., 2907, and falling fast. Heavy rains in north and northeast.
Mr. Campbell. Mr. Campbell, you better come down and look at the dam. The water's punched quite a hole in the south end. Right with you. There it is, boss. Shut the safety gates into the powerhouse. I'm going up to the ranger's cabin and broadcast a warning. Okay. There's a guy on the dam. I'm afraid she's going out. I want to broadcast a warning. Okay. There'll be a million tons of water if she gets loose. All right, go ahead. What's your number? H2QL. This is ranger station, H2QL. The Riverdale Dam is going out. The Riverdale Dam is going out. Get out of the valley to higher ground. There she goes. The Riverdale Dam is gone out. Get out of the valley to higher ground. The Riverdale Dam is gone out. Get out of the valley to higher ground. The animal doing this broadcast. Rebroadcast and notify all authorities. Get out of the valley to higher ground. This is Campbell, engineer of Riverdale Dam. Broadcasting from Ranger Station, h 2 The Riverdale Dam has gone out. Any amateur hearing this broadcast, we broadcast and notify everyone in your mission. The Riverdale Dam has gone out. Every amateur hearing this broadcast, we broadcast and notify everyone in your mission. The Riverdale Dam has gone out. Every amateur hearing this broadcast, we broadcast this warning and notify all your authorities. out. I need help. Okay, we'll be right over. Now listen, call him and tell him to round up the gang. I'll meet him in the garage. The Riverdale Dam is out. Warn everybody. Get them out of the low country. Riverdale Dam is out. Water will be here in one hour. Warn your neighbors. Hello, operator. Riverdale speaking. Give me Brownsville. Riverdale Dam is out. Leave the valley at once. Hello. Hello, call Jasper. Warn them. Tell them the dam is out. Dam Hello. is out. Riverdale, the dam is out. Try Valley Springs. I can't rouse them on my line. Call Middleburg and Jasper. Red, the Middleburg line is out. It's Box B on Route 16. Okay, kid. The next time we come back here, it'll probably be in a boat. Come on, let's go. Listen, promise me one thing. When that water starts shoving in here, get out. You get out of here and fix that Middleburg line. No roads are clear for automobile traffic. You must use a boat. Riverdale speaking. Lost persons will be at the relief station nearest your home, Wilson and York Avenue. The airport is underwater. No roads are clear. Delton Junction. Hello. Hello, the dam is out. I'm trying to get a rescue squad with a lifeline. Lost children are at the Elm Street School. The airport is underwater. The dam is out. The Riverdale Dam is out. Notify everybody. Get out of your homes to higher country. Flood is coming. We can't get through to that line. You'll have to give it to me later. Hello, Helen. All clear now? Nice work, Red. I just got Middleburg. Trunk line number four just went out, but I had a chance to get through first. How's everything with you? Okay. It's coming in here like Niagara. Well, don't stay there, then. Get out. I told you to get out of here. 
I've got work to do. And another five minutes of water will be in that board. Yes, I know it. That's why you've got to raise it. We'll raise it and we'll operate it. You're getting out of I'm here. I'm not getting out of here. This is my job. Oh, well, come on, Shorty. We've got to raise this board. Riverdale Dam is out. Leave the valley at once. Yes, the water's still rising. Operator? Operator? Hello? Yes, you can still land a plane at Bellona. Hello? Hello? Red, the Riverview line is dead. I can't reach the state hospital. There are 500 people there, and it's right in the path of the flood. Holy mackerel, that's on Route 16 again, isn't it? Yes, it is. Come on, Shorty. Hello, operator. I'm sorry, I can't get through there now. They're trying to fix the line. Warn your neighbors. Rescue squad will be notified immediately. which will take you to higher ground. There are doctors at the relief station at 6th and Walnut. Rescue squad will be notified. The boat will pick you up. Red Cross relief at 4th and Pine. The emergency squad should be there by now. They have medical aid with them. Hello. Hello. Sorry, I can't get through in that line. I gave them the message 15 minutes ago. Uh-oh, here come the Marines. Shall we join them? I thought I told you to get out of here. You're crazy. Now, come on, get out. Wait, Red, see if you can help me with the board. I've got to get a call through the emergency relief department. Now, I know you're crazy. Section 42 is out down near the junction. Shorty, see if you can get that line through. I'm going to stay here and see what I can do. And take Dottie with you. And double check. Come on, Dottie. See you later. Hello, Jasper. Hey, and don't forget to bring that boat back. This place is about washed out. Hello, Jasper. The line's still dead. Try him again. Not a bug. Now we've got to get out of here. I can't fix that. I think you're right. I got my own ideas about that. And what might they be? I'm going to find me a justice of the peace that can swim. Red, are you proposing to me? You said it. And it's going to stick. I'm nuts about you. Oh, me too, Red. Well, let's get out of here, find a minister, and start on our honeymoon. Well, where'll we go? That's up to you. Oh. <laughs> 